Hi everyone, it's Alex from Risk Academy. In this video I wanted to talk about auditing risk management and measuring risk management uh, effectiveness. Now I know this is probably the third or fourth time I'm doing on the same topic, um, but the reason I'm kind of re-recording this or updating the previous video is that I have recently, just before the World Cup, I have done two trainings about risk management for the internal auditors and talking to different internal auditors, to talking to about you know, probably 60 internal internal auditors, um, help me crystallize some of the ideas, some of the thoughts that I had. So to audit risk management, in my opinion, these are the four things that you need to look at. Thing number one, risk management one. The first thing to audit is risk management one. And when auditing risk management one, by the way, if you don't know what risk management one is, um, read the article underneath this video that I've written on the topic of risk management one versus risk management two. Now the first thing to audit is risk management one and when looking at risk management one you need to look at three things. Thing number one, is everything in place? There are usually in different industries there are usually some stupid requirements, some completely useless requirements have a risk management framework document, do quarterly risk reports, uh, have risk owners, or some other dumb thing that has nothing to do with the actual risk management, but it's a must-have because that's what the board members will ask for, what the audit committee members will ask for, uh, or what the regulators or the external auditors will ask for. So the first, or risk appetite statements, for example, is another one for non-financial companies. Um, completely useless and dumb, but somebody asks for them. So, first thing to check under risk management one, so 1A, is to check whether everything is in place. And it's basically like a five second checklist. Look for all the requirements that are some, somewhere documented in external documents and see if they have been fulfilled. Is there a document with that name? You don't actually check the quality of the document because it doesn't matter. It's risk management one, nobody reads it, it's useless, it's not connected to decision making. Nobody cares what's inside, it just it has to be there. The second thing that you need to check under the umbrella of risk management one, so it's 1B, and this is very important, you need to check how much time is actually spent on doing that. Is, is risk manager wasting businesses time on updating risk appetite statements, updating risk registers, heat maps, risk reports, and all the other silly things. If the risk manager is spending more than 10% of his time on this rubbish, that means it's probably not effective. That means it's probably not good. That's, that's a weakness that needs to be identified during the audit. The risk manager should spend as little as physically possible on risk management one. And the third thing under the umbrella of risk management one, um, which is one C, is basically if all this rubbish has been done, all these documents have been created, uh, then they might as well add some value to the business. No, they're not going to add value to the decision makers, they're useless to the decision makers. However, the external parties, the stakeholders, the regulators, the investors, the insurance companies, they still buy this rubbish. So that means the auditors need to check whether the risk manager is actually active in speaking with S&Ps, um, Fitch, Moody's, is active in speaking with external auditors, is active in speaking with finance organizations and insurance companies. and does he get discounts and better financial terms based on showing that they have risk management in place. So basically did risk management help save money and if this element is to be audited as positive it should have saved much more money than the actual salary of the risk manager. So that's under risk management one. Under risk management one you check for those three things and if they are done that's it that's like a five, you know that's a 15 minute um, 15 minute discussion and review of documents now the next one is a big one is risk management two this however has nothing to do with the risk managers the auditor does not need to talk to the risk managers uh, the auditor needs to talk to the business people to see how the most important decisions or the most important processes in the organization are risk based is there and when I say risk-based, it has to have a number of elements. Is there, a, at the policy or procedure or guideline level, a requirement to think about and measure and uh, calculate and identify and take into account risks when making a decision? 
Then second level is their methodology somewhere within that policy or procedure that will outline how to do it. Has the training been provided? Are people actually using it? Is somebody quality controlling it? What's the quality of the risk analysis? That's the biggest, that's 80% of the work. Well, maybe not 80, 70% of the work. That's a lot of effort. However, if the internal auditors change their approach to risk-based for all the other audits, they would actually have all the necessary answers by auditing business processes, uh, other business processes uh, prior to that risk management audit. So risk management too is actually not about auditing risk management, but rather auditing how decisions are being made and whether they're made with risks in mind or not. And then the third thing to check is, of course, risk culture. Has training been provided? Are job descriptions updated? Do people understand their roles and responsibilities? Are they um, positive about risk-taking? Are they encouraged to take, discuss, measure uh, risks? Uh, are th is the uh, risk manager perceived or viewed as the valuable advisor to the company? So the third thing is all about culture. And that's about, uh, you know, your, your 15 or, or so percent. And then the final fourth thing is, of course, the risk manager and the risk management team itself. Do they have the right qualifications? Do they have competency in corporate finance? Do they have competency in statistics? Do they have competency in uh, understanding the nature of the business? Do they understand the psychological side of risk? Uh, all of these are very important questions that the auditors should ask the risk managers themselves. And by looking at those four things, risk management one, risk management two, risk culture, and the risk management team itself, any auditor will be able to make a very effective judgment whether risk management is good or not. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts. Do write underneath this video, and don't forget to subscribe to the Risk Academy channel on YouTube. Thank you, and goodbye.